What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my main event breakdown for UFC Vegas 70. We have Nikita Krilov going against Ryan Span. And we are back breaking down the main event for UFC Vegas 70 this week, breaking down a, a very violent fight in Nikita Krylov going against Ryan Spann. A very interesting fight stylistically as well. Looking forward to breaking it down. Before we get into it, if you guys can please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, trying to reach 20K in the very near future. All the likes, all the subs are very, very much appreciated. Um, full card breakdown will be out on Tuesday, so be sure to subscribe and check that out. But yeah, going to be breaking down this main event here, talking about it. We'll talk some odds. We'll talk some props that stick out as well. It's a tough fight to call. This is a very tough fight to call, in my opinion. I know people are piling in on Nikita Krylov. I think Spain might be getting counted out a little bit here, but um, let's let's get into it. So we have a light heavyweight fight here, 205 pounds. We got Nikita Krylov going against Ryan Spann. We have the odds there on the screen. We have Krylov around the minus 160, Spann around plus 140. Obviously, those odds are subject to change, but we have Nikita Krylov, who is 30 years old, six foot three, with a 77 and a half inch reach. He is 29 and nine and three and two in his last five fights. Ryan Spann, 31 years old, six foot five, with an 81 and a half inch reach, 21 and seven in three and two in his last five fights. And this is why I think this fight is, is so hard to break down. First of all, I want to say Ryan Spann, this dude has, well, both guys really, but Ryan Spann is a guy that, I don't know, I, I kind of counted out a little bit, a guy that, you know, I wasn't, you know, too high on, but in his last two fights, he's going out there, he's looking good. I mean, going out there, I think he's a pretty decent sized dog against uh, Dominic Reyes, went out there, knocked out Dominic Reyes in a minute and 20 seconds. And something he said um, in his interview really stuck out to me. I thought it was kind of funny, actually. He was like, um, after he knocked out Dominic Reyes, he was like, I, I put in the work this camp, and he was like, this is the, the first time I had like an actual camp, right? This is the first time I had an actual training camp, which which kind of stuck out to me a little bit. So um, it sounds like he's starting to kind of take this whole thing serious, which is very interesting. I mean, this is a guy in Ryan Spann who has all the physical attributes. He's six foot five. He's huge, an 81 and a half inch reach. He has a ton of power, and he has a very slick submission game as well that we'll talk about. So this guy has all the attributes. He's looking to start. Um, he's looking to finally put it together here, and it's starting to go out there and and maybe take things serious, which is you know very good, right? Um, Nikita Krylov is a guy that I've always been pretty high on. I think this guy's very skilled. I think he has a very well-rounded skill set. I think he's very dangerous. Um, this guy has like 39 fights. And I think he's only been to decision like twice. I mean, this guy's a killer, be killed fighter. Um, really like Nikita Krylov. Um, but there are some holes in his game. Um, and a hole that does concern me in this matchup is going to be the submission defense of Nikita Krylov. And I know he got submitted by, by Paul Craig. We can absolutely forgive him for that. I mean, did he show the best fight IQ in that fight? No, he didn't at all. But getting submitted by Paul Craig, it's, it's not the end of the world. But... He's been submitted like five other times as well. So I, I really question the submission defense of Nikita Krylov. He's getting himself put into to bad spots on the mat. And Ryan Spann, he actually has a really good submission game. He has a really good guillotine. And my concern is if Krylov does go in for takedowns, um, and he does leave his neck out, Ryan Spann can absolutely finish the fight. Like, Ryan Spann has multiple submissions on his record. Uh, Ryan Spann actually has a lot more submissions then he does knockouts, believe it or not. Ryan Spann is finishing 57% of his wins by submission. So I get why Krilov is favored in this matchup. You know, he's going to be the minute winner in this matchup. He's going to be able to go out there and, and get takedowns, right? But on the feet, it's going to be Ryan Spann who's going to have the power to hurt Krilov. And then on the mat, Ryan Spann is going to be able to threaten with, with guillotines, um, threaten with stuff off his back. So, um, it's just a weird matchup to me. It's a really weird matchup to me. What I what I do like in this fight quite a bit is maybe like the under one and a half or even like the under two and a half alternate rounds. Uh, Ryan Spann is a guy that, especially as of late, you know, he's, he's getting in and he's getting out. Ryan Spann, in his last five fights, he has not seen the second round. So I think these guys are going to go after it early. I think Spann, I think both guys really have the power 
to put either guy out on the feed. And then I think Nikita Krilov, he has that good submission game in his own right. He has that good ground and pound. Ryan Spann has that good submission game as well. So I think there's paths for both these guys to finish and both these guys to finish early. So the, the way I would be attacking this fight would be like an under one and a half or like an under two and a half. Um, but as far as making a pick goes, uh, I think I might take a shot on, on Spann here as far as a pick. I... I, like I said, I get why Krilov's favored. He should be able to get takedowns here. He should be able to stay safe on top, but man, I don't know. I mean, this guy is getting himself submitted a ton. He's getting himself into a, a ton of bad spots. Like, um, just in the UFC alone, this guy's been submitted like four times in the UFC alone. He's been submitted four times and got submitted a couple times outside the UFC as well back in the day. So uh, I think Ryan Spann's going to have opportunities to snatch up a neck here and, and get that guillotine, you know, and, and I think Ryan Spann's going to have path, a path to victory in terms of knocking out uh, Nikita Krilov early on as well, so the pick is going to be Ryan Spann, um, but the bet is going to be like that, like I said, the under one and a half rounds, I think somebody's getting finished in this matchup, both these guys are super dangerous, and both these guys can be finished, Ryan Spann's been finished in five of seven losses, three coming by knockout, two by sub, and then Krilov has been finished in seven of nine losses. Like I said, six of those coming by submission. So I think it's a fun fight. I think it's going to be a very, very fun fight for as long as it lasts. But I think Pispan has some paths to victory. I think he's getting counted out here a little bit. I just want to take a look and see where this line opens. So uh, Nikita Krilov opened up minus 150. He's currently minus 160. And then Ryan Spann opened up plus 130. He's currently plus 140. I'm not sure where this line's going to go. I see a lot of love out there for Krilov. And like I said, I get it. But, man, you're going to be sweating when, when he's shooting in for those takedowns with his neck out. Um, I think Ryan Spann's super live for that sub. So the, the final prediction for me is going to be Ryan Spann by submission. And I'm curious to see where they'd have that submission prop at. So Spann by submission right now on Bet Online Sportsbook is sitting at plus 600. Curious to see where uh, Fandle and, and DraftKings uh, do drop that prop. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to this fight. Two guys that are, are very dangerous. Uh, very good main event here. A very good main event. Um, and it's a big fight. It's a really big fight. I mean, Span's a guy that he took a pretty big step up in competition from the guys he's been fighting. You know, he went out there and he finished Devin Clark. He beat Sam Alvey. He beat uh, Daguerre. Um he lost to Johnny Walker. He, you know, he beat Serkinov. And then he takes a, a step up against Ryan uh, against uh, Anthony Smith, right? And he did not look good. He actually got destroyed in that matchup. Um, but, like I said earlier, he's starting to finally put it together. Got two really good wins in a row, both in the first round. He's super dangerous everywhere the fight goes. So, give me Ryan Spann to get it done. And I will say Ryan Spann does win this fight. And I say he wins it by... By first round submission, I think the trend continues. Ryan Spann has not seen a, a second round in almost like like two and a half years. Like it's been a while since this guy's seen the second round. I think these guys are going to go after it early. Like Nikita Krilov, he goes after it like a complete madman in that first round. He did it against Gustafson, went out there, starched him. He went out there against Uzdemir, and Uzdemir. I mean, both guys almost knocked each other out in that first round. So, yeah, I think they're going to go after it early. I think both guys will have their moments early, but I'm going to say Span does lock up a submission in that first round. Uh, let me know who you guys have down in the comments. Um, like I said, I'll be getting out my full card breakdown and prediction video on Tuesday. Lots of newcomers on this card in UFC Vegas 70. I think we have like six or seven fighters making their debuts, so I wanted to take an extra day, get some extra tape in, uh, research these guys and, and the ladies a little bit more as well, um, so the prediction video will be out on Tuesday there, but yeah, that is the breakdown for Span Krilov, the pick, Ryan Span by sub, the bet is going to be like the under one and a half rounds around a pick them there, and then also I don't mind like the fight doesn't go to decision as a parlay piece as well, uh, so yeah, guys, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you have not already if you do want to become a member on dfsbythenumbers.com be sure to do so ten dollars a month um i do have two bets thus far already i'm gonna have a lot of bets on this card i think a lot of spots are sticking out a lot of violent spots as well and then of course we have ufc 285 next week which i'm going to be going to the cards so i'm looking forward to that so i'm sure i'll have some early bets out for that um article this week should be dropping 
Wednesday night at the very latest, maybe Thursday morning. So lots of stuff over there on DFS by the numbers.com. I do want to say appreciate all support week in and week out. You guys are awesome. Uh, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. You can check me out on Twitter, DFS underscore numbers. Instagram is DFS by the numbers. Uh, live stream Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And then Saturday, one hour prior to the prelims. Best of luck for UFC Vegas 70. We'll talk to you guys soon. See you later.